everybody doing out there today? Uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about the modified umbrella rig. Uh, it's been all over uh, the news, the internet, everything like that. Uh, some people call it the Alabama rig. This is the agitator rig, this version here. I'm here to tell you a little bit about, you know, different things we do to rig it, different ways to fish it. Everybody, I get a lot of emails, uh, a lot of information. Everybody wants to know when to throw it, where to throw it, how to throw it, you know, what are the different tricks uh, to using it. Is it only used for ledge fishing? Uh, some people think if there's a mud puddle and it's got a fish with gills in it, you throw it in there. That's not necessarily true. You gotta, you gotta find the fish. Uh, it's, it's a good bait when the bass turn off. You search them out with a uh, crank bait or something like that. Uh, it's a good bait to get them to turn back on. It's basically a rig that represents a school of uh, big fish, a small school. It looks very vulnerable. Uh, it has a lot of vibration to it. You throw it out there, you count it down to uh, schools of bait fish that you see suspended on your graph. If you're fishing deep water, it works really well like that. You count them down and, and a lot of times they'll stop. They won't eat a crankbait when they're suspended like that. Uh, can't get them to bite anything else. You turn around, you throw this out there. It's real nice and slow and steady. You don't really, uh, there's not a lot that you can do wrong with this rig. You can uh, do different things. You know, pop your rod tip when you're doing that kind of stuff get the baits to flare out. Uh, this rig here has lighter light wires on them. So every time you pop your rod tip, the baits, they flare out like that. And it looks like a set of agitated school bait fish. Uh, it triggers them to bite. Uh, you can use them around here on the Potomac River and things like that and get them to bite along the grass edges in, a, in the summertime, late fall. I used it last year. Uh, we had this rig out for a while before the Alabama rig really got popular. So it's kind of been a, really a phenomenon with the fishing industry now. And we use it, we have it three, three wire. I throw it on 65 pound braid, uh, whatever braid that you choose to use. I use a seven foot six uh, flipping stick extra heavy Denali rod. You need something with a heavy backbone. Uh, this rig probably weighs three to four ounces depending on how you rig it. This one's rigged with swim bait right here. Uh, I have another way to rig it that actually, this one is with uh, just curl tail worms. And this has the open hooks on it. This is something I use, you know, when I'm fishing over structure uh, on ledges and things like that. When I'm down in Tennessee, I, I use this a lot when the fish are holding down there. Uh, with, the, with the smaller grubs like that, with this is a zipper uh, four inch worm with a curl tail, you don't have to reel this fast. You can reel nice and slow. And the rig actually looks really nice in the water. And when you reel it through the water, it looks like bait fish. But every time you pop it, it looks like schooling bait fish. But like I said, there's really no wrong way to fish it. You can fish it a lot of different areas. I, I fish it around pylons, things like that. But you see, you barely reel it, and it looks just like a school of bait fish. It, it's amazing at how many fish you can catch on it. You can catch multiple bass on it, it happens a lot. One of the things I recommend when you're, when you're fishing it and you catch a bass on it, a lot of people, what they tend to do as they turn around and they load up the rod tip, you know, they'll hit them hard when the, when the fish bites. You don't necessarily do that. You just either speed up your reel or just turn around and just keep reeling steady. And then the second fish will hit, you'll feel it load up. It doesn't act, actually knock slack in your line like you would if you were fishing a, a swim bait or something like that. These fish come up and eat at it, and when they grab it, it just pulls on. You'll just feel the steady pressure. A lot of times you'll think you're hitting a rock or something like that, and then the next thing you know, you'll feel the head shake. So it's amazing. If, if you want, when you, when you fish it, you turn around and you just reel nice and steady. You can count it down to the bottom and then you can pop it up off the bottom and work it over structure and do the same thing. It doesn't have to be just reeled in nice and slow and steady or, or anything like that. But you'll, you'll catch multiple fish on this, I guarantee that. I mean, if you find a school of fish, especially smallmouth, uh, I was fishing Lake Erie uh, for the regional championships last year when we went out. You catch one three, four pound smallmouth, next thing you know, the rod would load up again, load up again, and you just continue to feel fish hit it and actually trying to get the bait out of another fish's mouth. And it was amazing. I mean, the most I've caught on is three at a time, but you can feel the other fish hitting it. And it's, it's just a fun rig to fish. Like I said, there's really no wrong way to fish it. But uh, it's a little cumbersome to cast, especially if you, you know, you're not used to throwing a rig this big. So what I recommend is a rod like this Denali rod that has a long handle on it. And you kind of use this as your fulcrum when you cast. 
and you keep your elbow in tight to you. And when you cast it, you throw it out and you pull with your hand. And that helps you cast the rig farther and you don't have all that fatigue in your shoulder. Uh, it will wear you sitting there. I fit from bridge pile to do the air the column of the water column. I'll throw it right against like the pylons and I'll let it fall down the, co the columns and I'll just, you know, bob it up and down like I'm yo-yoing it. And it represents like bait fish feeding on the, the, the bridge pylons. And I'll turn around and uh, along grass edges, like I said, I'll throw it out there along grass edges and just real nice and slow along the edge of the grass. And just every once in a while, you just pop your rod tip to make them look like they're scurrying. You'll notice as you're reeling us up the side of the boat or the bank, if there's a school of bait fish around, they'll be swimming with it. You'll have two, three hundred bait fish swimming with it in a pod thinking it's real. And as soon as you pop your rod tip and that rig flares apart, you'll turn around and you'll see all the bait fish start scurrying to the surface like, they, like they, something's chasing them and they get scared like that. So uh, it's, it's a very realistic rig. It's amazing how well it works. Uh, some of the other things I like to do, if I'm fishing uh, bridge pylons with the, the concrete and everything like that, I'll step off of the, the 65 pound braid and I'll go over to like a 20 pound, 25 pound fluorocarbon. That's a little more abrasive resistance and it seems to work better around that. Uh, another thing I recommend too is if you're going to be fishing grass, I use the, the weedless hooks like the uh, hollow belly swim bait hooks that have the belly weight on them. And you can rig it different ways to get it to run different ways. Uh, like with the swim baits, like these hollow belly swim baits I have on here, they all have belly weights on them. And uh, as you see, you can rig them all up. They all have eight ounce weight on those. So the whole rig weighs about three, three ounces total. And with that paddle tail, it just has a lot of vibration and everything like that in the water. It can be real, real easy. As you see, they all, they're kind of running funny because they had to cut all the hooks off to get it for the tank here. But uh, yeah, you rig them up nice and straight. Another little trick I like to do is bass, when they're feeding, they kind of look, tend to look for the, the fish that's the, the most likely of, of a target. The bigger fish, uh, the one that's trailing behind. So on my center wire, a lot of times I'll put like a five inch swim bait on there. And I'll rig these top wires with no weight, just weedless hooks. And I'll have maybe my two bottom wires with, uh, with weighted hooks on it. And it'll keel it. And you'll, you'll catch the fish, they either feed it from coming from underneath or the back. But you'll notice nine times out of 10, they'll hit the center wire. That's why I like to put the bigger bait on there. It looks like it's trailing behind the group. It looks like it's the, you know, the one that's injured or, or something like that. And it, it tends to get more bites.